It's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home and today I thought I'd uh, take you guys through hydro dipping a radio. Now uh, this is an old pace radio. Um, so it's a plastic radio. It's got a plastic housing. It comes off in one piece so that will be a problem. Um, and the reason that's going to be an issue is because if you want to do an entire piece you need a very large container and very careful hands. Um, but what we're going to do is just spray paint the bottom of this and, and hydro dip the top I think. Um, I think if this video does well enough I'm going to teach you guys how to remove vinyl from your Cobra radios because they don't they don't have a plastic housing they have a metal housing with uh, vinyl on them and there's a specific way you have to remove it which works very well it is not difficult um, so yeah if this does well I'll do that um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this radio this is an old pace 8010 like I said in my last video this is one of the lightest radios I've ever felt that doesn't mean it's a bad quality, it actually still functions just fine. Um, but it does have a plastic housing that slips right off. And it slips off in one entire piece. And it's pretty easy to put back together. You just got two screws back here. Yes indeed, sir. And uh, I just picked out some good paint. You want good paint for this. And not oil-based paint, but you want acrylic paint. Um, so we have Rust-Oleum here. We got Cryon. Cry. Krylon paint, which I know how to say by the way. So what we're going to do is um, sand this down. You kind of want to sand anything down that you're painting just to give it a little bit better stick. See when I used to paint, I was really big on painting with just um, yellow, uh, red, and blue. That's all I would paint with because that's, that's your base colors. You can make anything out of them, right? Even black. Um, so I would paint specifically with these colors. So I know how well they work together. So I think since this is yellowed, which initially knew I think it was a little more white, but this is yellowed, I think I'll go with a yellow there. I would go with a red, but I'm feeling like a blue would really set it off. Um, so yellow and blue, I think that'll do just fine. The yellow will be a continuation of the front panel and the, uh, the blue will just contrast completely with it. So uh, yeah, let's do it. Although I would recommend using higher grit sandpaper, if you find some garbage sandpaper laying around the yard, that'll work too. Uh, that's how I do it. But anyways, no, that shouldn't matter. Um, if you take, if you go too large on the sandpaper, you can always come down a bit, um, which means go up in grit. But uh, yeah, I'm just seeing how this works, and then uh, it shouldn't be too deep the scratches. We'll see though, won't we? We'll see if I fuck it up. Oh, also, uh, wear a mask. While you're doing this, you know, I know, I know there's a lot of debate about masks, but this is one of the cases where it's, it's pretty obvious that you may need one. So, all right. All right, now that's sanded down, we're going to hit it with some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, that just means alcohol, but it sounds cooler if you say isopropyl. But anyways, that's, that's a degreaser. That's going to get rid of any grease. We don't want any grease at all. Yeah. Oh, I, I went into my serious mood all of a sudden. Ah, uh, you got rid of the chicken! Now, remember when you're done with your sandpaper, it's still usable, so put it in a safe space um, that you can find it next time. All right, so I got Michelle strung up here, right, on a wire. It is uh, beneath a tree, which is a danger because, uh, for one, needles fall everywhere. So I'm taking a bit of a risk. If you have anything better set up, I would do that, you know, preferably not under a tree. But, oh well. Anyways, we're going to paint this now yellow. And uh, we have it strung here on a wire. Focus. Yeah, anyways, you don't want to paint that part. Paint the rest of it, not that part. It's going to leave a dip. It's going to make it look ugly right here. So we'll paint the rest of it. Um, and then we'll just set it on its side once it's dry and finish that up. Anyways, when you paint, make sure you shake it a lot. Give it a nice shake. And then it's better to do this on a hot day as well. Um, you see, it'll dry faster, obviously, but also it causes the paint to lay down very well. Uh, it gives a smooth surface. It's better to do this on a dry day, better evaporation. A warm day, um, that's better for the paint itself. It lays down better that way, um, especially if you're using something like Plasti Dip. If you spray too far away, it'll dry before it gets there. It can cause um, sort of a um, rhino lining coat which some people enjoy if you like that look you can get it you can't really get it so much with this it uh it can leave some nasty bumps and stuff on there 
but a uh, nice warm day shaking a lot it should uh, have a smooth coat remember if it starts to drip go to the doctor all right she's looking good about right there we're gonna let her dry and we'll come back for an next coat it's still wanting to sort of not as bad as it was though yeah it's just a mess Mmm, fumes. So that hits it. the brain so pretty good right there. Oh yeah, baby. I'm gonna get so fucked on this tonight. <laughs> Johnny Jones at home sniffs paint. And this is just, I love this. This is great. I'm a professional. And uh, that don't look like shit at all. And one over here. Yeah. That still looks like shit. God damn, man. I might just push that to the side. What do you think? Nah. Yeah, let's see. Here, let me see. Nah, I'll, I'll... Hand me some red. Do not drop the phone. It's ugly, but we're going to try it. Well, you fucked that up. Oh yeah, I did. No, I think it's actually like frozen up. See so, yeah. Yeah. So something happened. Uh oh god. Yeah. I told you we should have started over. There we go with the blue. Now the yellow. That already looks cool. Looks as though it's separating. Could be because of the uh, wind, or not the wind, the uh, humidity and the coolness, and it ain't working no more. All right. I'm going with red. Plan B. Oh, God. Oh, that looks pretty cool there. Yeah, do that, brother. Pick on this side, maybe. Here's some yellow. No, 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 I we're doing like that. Yep. Let's do his first. Well, make sure you got enough paint. Now that's enough paint dip. Here, give me to wipe away that mess. I'm going on the top, that's fine. Go ahead and pull it out. <laughs> I don't think that turned out so well. <laughs> I think it looks pretty cool, but think, I think it's too cold. It is, I think it's too I think cold. I think we need to cold. warm the water Let's warm up. warm the water. We'll be right back, guys. You like your costume buttermilk? Are you afraid to move? Come here, butter. Come here. Butter, come here. You can move, butter. Come here. You can move. Come here. Butter, come here. Jesus. Oh, here is the first result, and actually the best result, uh, even though the uh, spotty and blotchy paint is there. Um, the further results were not any better, and that's because, you know, initially the wind was blowing, it was cold outside, the water was freezing, cold, you know, the, um, the paint was cold. So this is what we got initially, with everything being just cold. And so I warm up the water, and I warm up the paint, because it'll help with dispersion. Um, so you just put that in some warm water. Heat it up, you know. Don't put it in the microwave. Take some hot water, put it into a bowl, and then put your paint can in there, okay? Don't put your paint can in the microwave. And if you do, send me a video. Oh, just don't. I won't even say that because there's someone out there that would do that, and somehow I'd be held responsible. So no, no, don't even do that. So warm the water up, warm the paint up. Wind was still blowing. And the paint thinner is just starting to evaporate very quickly because the wind's blowing, the water's warm, the paint itself's warm. So what ended up happening is the paint was starting to go from this flowing liquid to this 
well, what it is, a sort of plasticine product. And um, that is the result here. God. Now, in the video, which I will show you, I say, you know, that don't look so good. I, I don't think I'd try that. And then my brother's like, no, no, he, he tried. It is fine. I'm like, oh, well, let's see. It's sort of like if a clown threw up. Yeah, I think I was right, don't you think? Now, as you can see here, the uh, blue and the red were, were flowing a little longer than the yellow because the yellow just immediately turned into a gummy mess. So this is going to have to be took and, uh, took and, taken off, sanded down, you know. But that's fine. That was just a test thing anyway. That's for an old um, Navajo radio. This doesn't look the greatest, I'll admit. I'm going to try to uh, paint the top side of this, and uh, using the information that I have now, hopefully it turns out a little better. Blue! And... Orange! What? I'm colorblind. Okay. Don't make fun of me! What's this one? Joe Biden! Brandon! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good. Yeah, stick right. it in there. Now this time I'm going to go slow because I think last time is the reason why I went too fast is the reason why there was a lot of bubbles under it. Slow ride. Foghorn Leghorn. Unfortunately, this is going to be an issue here, isn't it? You probably uh -oh. just have to sand that off a little bit. Yep. I think it's good here anyway. There we go. All right. You didn't smudge it, did you? No, I just got some stuff off side. Oh, yeah. Let's see if it doesn't have nearly as many bumps and it doesn't look like either. Yeah. I think we got a little bit of oil right there. Somebody got their fingerprint on it, maybe. Maybe so. That's a shame. I just cleaned it with alcohol. Maybe that, or where the paint wasn't so thick. Mm, it's probably oil. It looks like oil to me. It looks like it didn't stick. Oh well, we'll see, right? Yeah, it's right in the yellow part too, anyways. Yeah. Okay. Cool guys. So it is finally completed. Um, this was not an easy endeavor, uh, as I assumed it to be. But the great thing about that is, I know you've waited a while on this video, but there's a lot of knowledge to pass down to you because I've done this with a lot of test objects and uh, and I found out really what you need to be concerned about. Number one, the water cannot be too hot. If it's lukewarm, you're great, but if it's too warm, then it's going to cause the paint thinner to evaporate faster. And that's going to leave you with a sticky, gummy mess. All right. Uh, two, you need to be careful of what paints you use. Uh, I'd stick with the same brand or at least test the different paints out first because certain paints, it seems, will act differently. They'll either uh, solidify faster uh, than others or they won't stick together right. Uh, you need to spray several inches off the surface of the water. If you spray, as I did in the first shot, uh, when, I, when I did the bottom, too close to the water, you're going to get splattering and that can make it really ugly looking. Uh, when you lay down your lines, make sure, don't do a bunch of coats of paint as far as um, don't spray, oh, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, over and over and over. Um, it makes it a big, god-awful mess. And if you don't have your lines thick enough, uh, there, you know, basically if you don't use enough paint when you spray, and you're just spraying a small little line every time you end up with this god-awful thing, and as you can see here, the lines that you're seeing are from not enough paint. <laughs> you need uh, more paint, otherwise they start mixing together. These small lines of paint start mixing and becoming this god-awful topographic map of some strange alien planet that even the aliens don't want to live on. So take it easy, use the colors sparingly, keep it simple. Otherwise, if you just go in there, spray the spray, 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 you're going to come up with a big god awful mess. Okay. Now, here's another thing that's really important. On the bottom, you can see here, now from far away it looks decent, but as you can see here, you see those little bubbles? Those bubbles are caused by air and water becoming trapped underneath the paint film. So you need to uh, put your chassis, whatever your 
pie dripping in at an angle, right? And go very slowly with it. I went too fast with the bottom and here on the top, I didn't have that problem nearly as bad. Um, clean every surface you can with a degreaser. I even cleaned this whole thing with alcohol and still managed to have an issue with paint sticking here. Uh, so thank God it's finally done. I know you guys have waited a while on this, but it was something that I had to get done somewhat right. If I had to do this all again, I would not do one side and then the other side because you can see it causes some ugliness here. Um, the back not so much, but uh, the sides... Now, of course, this looks fine because the blue was against the blue, but if I had do it, done this again, I would have got a larger container and just soak this side all the way down. Got a large container, that way the paint coated the whole thing, both sides, up, into, uh, up until this point here. Because uh, having to soak both sides um, horizontally does leave some ugliness here. Uh, that's just something I had to learn the hard way finally done uh, sorry for the wait I'm working on another video for my 1,000 subscribers which I'm super happy about and uh, yeah I uh, didn't think this would be that much of a problem but it has been one hell of a problem lots of takes you haven't seen lots of objects we've tried that you haven't seen and uh, yeah well hey I hope you guys think it at least looks decent enough um it's not pretty to me i think it's a it's a good attempt and i think the colors are pretty but there's a lot of uh problems here now you would need to clear coat this by the way i haven't because i've been waiting on this to dry just to do this damn end of the video uh but you need to clear coat this so the paint doesn't ship anyways it's johnny jones i'm here at home oh, i almost forgot today's music and it's early ronnie james Dio. Now, Rodney James Dio wasn't always the metal god that he ended up being. Of course, metal didn't exist at this time, and Rodney went through a lot of different genres trying to figure out what he really wanted to do. Um, he was just basically trying to break it in the music uh, business and do whatever he could to get there. So, from 1958 to 1962, the, uh, he had a band, Ronnie and the Red Caps, as you can see down here, um, if I can focus, yeah. Uh, I think they changed their name to The Prophets. Um, anyway, so this is um, an early track, um, An Angel is Missing. Now, you'll find this stuff, anytime I recommend music, it is going to be in a subscriber list and under music. It's called Music for My Subs under my list, so you don't have to look this stuff up. So this is An Angel is Missing. It's really old. Um, it's It sounds like the really late 50s, early 60s. Just that uh, oom bop bop kind of thing. <laughs> and then uh, the next one here is the um, one he did. Let me stop this from playing. The one he did in 67, uh, which is much more Beatles-esque with the tambourines and, the, and everything and the jumpy rhythm. So to hear Ronnie James Dio go for the, go from this like, the swooner type sound into this upbeat 60s color -y, you know everybody's jumping and there's rainbows in the sky sound to then uh him going into elf then rainbow then black sabbath um and then heaven hell dio just it uh, it's crazy how much talent this guy had to do these things so uh yeah these are going to be in my music for sub list yeah, i hope you enjoy them anyways it's johnny jones I'm here at home, and I'll see you later.